We've been in the chapter of nine for quite some time, a little over a month. So we're into a brand new chapter today, chapter 10. But we're in the same story, aren't we? We still have not finished up where Jesus heals the man born blind. We've actually got a couple more uh, messages this week and next week, and we'll finish that one up finally. But uh, we have seen all along the way that as long as opportunity knocks, we need to be taking that opportunity to share the gospel. We need to be taking that opportunity to give to people that Jesus might be able to make them new. This man we saw already that he was made so new that people didn't even recognize him. Physically, they didn't recognize him, much less spiritually. And then we have seen a pattern of leaders following or, or leading people astray. Not just this man, but many in the crowd were being led astray. And that continues today in our passage today. We're in chapter 10 of, uh, and Jesus says basically two things in this passage. And I love that. And he gives us a way, first of all, he gives us a way to evaluate our leaders, spiritual leaders. He shows a contrast and a comparison between good and bad leaders in this passage. And then he straightly, plainly, just, just is clear with them and tells them who to follow, who to follow. So look at our passage. If you're able and willing, whether you're in the worship centers here on campus or if you're watching with us online, I'm going to ask you to stand with us if you are able and willing for the reading of God's word. We're in John chapter 10 and verse 1. God's word says this. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will, lead from, they, they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of, of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today and I thank you for the message. I thank you that you are the door. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to limit the distractions around us today, that you would help us to just focus on you for just a moment as we study your word, as we study this passage, as we study the fact that you are the door, that no one that leads can go through any other way but through you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now you can be seated. So, so far, we have seen that these people being led astray, we winded up on that, or we wound up on that there in chapter 9, didn't we? Where these people were being led astray. Phil, come here real quick. That these people were being led astray, and Jesus is going to share with them He's going to share with them how to evaluate their leaders. He's going to share with them that there is a way for you to evaluate their leaders. And specifically, he's talking about spiritual leaders. Now, that's kind of dangerous ground when you're a preacher, aren't you? Because that's talking about us. 
It's talking about us teachers, those of us who teach, those of us who lead spiritually. Jesus says right here, he says, he says, there's a way that you can evaluate them to see. He says, basically, there are two types of leaders. There are good leaders and there are bad leaders. There are false leaders and there are good leaders. He says, and you need to be able to know how to evaluate them. Now in chapter 9, we finished up with chapter 9, how, how they were being led astray. And he says, I need you to stop. You need to realize that you're being led astray. Now look back with me into chapter 9 real quick again. Remember, the, the crowd was questioning Jesus. And the leaders, the spiritual leaders, the ones leading them astray, they were questioning Jesus. They just didn't understand or they didn't like the answers that they were getting from Jesus. They didn't like them. Look back at chapter 9 and verse 30. Verse 30 says, the man answered, why this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from and yet he opened my eyes. They didn't like being called out that way, did they? They didn't like the answer that they got in that case. He goes on in verse 31. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Now, here's the part they don't like. Never since the world began has, has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They didn't like the people seeing Jesus as the Messiah. They didn't like that answer. They didn't like the fact that they looked at him and people started following him. They didn't like those answers. Look at verse 34. They answered him, you were born in utter sin. And would you teach us? And they cast him out. They were out of options, weren't they? They didn't like the answers they were getting. So they said, well, if I can't win, I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go home. Right? We've all been in those kind of battles. That's where this man was. He says, well, or, or that's what the Pharisees were in this case. If I can't win, I'm going to take my ball and go home. So you're out of the club. You can't come to church anymore. I'm kicking you out. So that's what their, their solution was. But Jesus lays out the answer. Jesus says here, he says, there are good leaders and bad leaders. There are false leaders that will lead you astray. And then there were leaders that will lead you to the gospel, not away from the gospel. And he compares and contrasts these quickly in just about the first five verses that we read this morning. Look at the first two with me one more time. In verse 1, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who, this is a comparison now. He says, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way. He says, you need to be able to evaluate your spiritual leaders. And if he's coming in by any other way than the door, then you have a bad leader. He says, that man is a thief and a robber. What do thieves do? They steal. What do robbers do? They steal, they destroy, they kill, right? They're murderers, they're destroyers. That's what it says later on down in verse, I think it's verse 10. He says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, right? He says, those are leaders that you don't need to be following. He says in the first couple of verses, he says, good leaders come in by the door. But verse 1 says, bad leaders come in some other way. So if you have a leader that is leading you spiritually, and that, that might not have to be your pastor, it might even just be your friend. You know, in the military, when someone got in trouble, they would go talk to their friends first to see how to keep from getting in trouble, trouble. Right? We call them dormitory, Brother Coy, you might, you might have used this term before in your time. I don't know, some of you others that have been in the military, have you ever heard the term dormitory lawyers? That's all your friends giving you advice, right? 
We had one guy one time, he came into my office and he says, look, he says, I kind of got a DUI. <laughs> kind of. You either did or you didn't, right? I'm like, what do you mean you got, you kind of? He says, well, yeah, he says, I came on the base and I was riding my motorcycle and, and, and you know, I was talking to some friends of mine and they said, look, as long as you're not on it, when they get to you, then you're okay. What kind of lawyer is that? That's dormitory lawyering, right? It, that, that, that's, that's a bad leader. That, they're, following, they're leading you astray. You don't need to follow that kind of advice. So instead of stopping for the policeman, he ran. And he got to his dorm, got off his bike, ran inside, and then hid out in his room. Well, guess what all his friends in the dorm did? They said, he's the owner of that bike lives in that room. You know, it, it doesn't take rocket science to figure out on a military base who a vehicle belongs to because every single vehicle has a sticker. And all they have to do is look you up. And the people chasing you are the people that have access to the database that the stickers are entered into, right? So this guy wasn't all there. He wasn't all smart, you know? And then he leaned on his dormitory lawyers to see if he could get out of this. So he comes and he sits in my office and he says, look, he says, I kind of got a DUI. You know, and I'm like, what? He says, yeah, but. I don't think so because I'm going to fight it. You know, I'm going to get a lawyer. I'm going to fight it because I was in my dorm room when they st I'm like, man, whoever's leading you is leading you astray. You don't need to be following that kind of leader. Listen, this passage today says good leaders come in through the door. They're honest about how they got there. They're transparent. They're clear. Bad leaders, mm, they got something else in mind. And they will destroy you. They will lead you astray. In verse 3, we see that leaders that are good, that are honest, that are true leaders, they're given access. They didn't steal it. They didn't take it. Right? That's what happened in verse 1. The bad leader that's explained there in verse 1, they took the access. God says here, he says there's a difference between the two. Verses 3 and 4 say, a good leader, the sheep know their voice. And then later, I think it's in verse 5, bad leaders, what do the sheep do? They flee. They don't know, those, they don't know that voice. They're not going to follow them if they don't know their voice. In verse uh, 3, it says that good leaders call the sheep by name. If I'm a bad leader and I come in and, and I don't care about the sheep, I'm just there to take advantage of them, to, get, to make my name great, I'm not going to worry about learning names, am I? I'm not going to worry about that kind of stuff. Jesus says here, he says, good sheep or, or good leaders know the sheep by name and calls them by name. He says in the same verses that the good leaders, the sheep will go to them. But the bad leaders, they'll flee from. Good leaders, the sheep will follow. Bad leaders, they won't follow. Good leaders will actually lead. Not everybody who leads spiritually actually leads. If they're there just to make their name great, just to make themselves famous, just to pad their wallets, then, then they're not leading. They're just taking advantage of. And when we don't realize that there is a way to evaluate our leaders, whether it be in, in your pastor, your teacher, your friend who's given you spiritual advice, there's a way for us to evaluate this. And Jesus specifically calls them false leaders. He says they're thieves, they're robbers, they're destroyers. They just come to steal, kill, and destroy. He says you need to be aware of that. He says you need to be aware of the fact that you're being led astray. And that's the passage that we've been studying, isn't it? 
They've been, all of their spiritual leaders have been leading them astray. And Jesus comes on the scene and he says, you need to pay attention. You need to look and see that you're being led astray. You need to be able to know that when a, when a leader comes in by another way and there'll be evidence in their life. Listen, for some of us, when it comes to churches, it's easy for us to pick out the bad leaders, isn't it? It's easier for us to see that because some churches, you know, they have leaders, you know, now this church is different. This church has a really good pastor. I mean, what, <clears throat> are you coughing, Phil? Is it the COVID? Is it the Rona? Quarantine again. Two more weeks for you. No, no, no. And I'm with you there. You know, this church, we got a great pastor. He's great looking. I mean, he's, he's much better looking than his dad, right? Now, he's in the other... Wait, no, I'm in the wrong... Oh, wait. No, but there are churches that it's clearly being led by someone who came in by a different way, isn't it? Listen, if we got in our car right now, we drove south just three or four hours, you'd find one of the largest churches... In the nation. And I think this applies. Now some of you say. Well, I, 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 I listen to him. Stop it. Right? You remember the stop it video. I had you guys go home and watch. That's it. Stop it. The day I stand up in this pulpit. And I tell you as a church. That I will no longer preach on sin. That's the day you label me as a false teacher, as a bad leader. Listen, Scripture is clear that all Scripture is profitable, whether it be doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, all of it. And Jesus didn't lay off sin, did he? The day I do that is the day I'll be in the same category as that gentleman. I don't get to do that. I know churches that won't preach the Old Testament. Why? That's scripture. Jesus preached the Old Testament. Therefore, I believe it's all profitable. And I think we ought to preach it all. Listen, that's one of the reasons that I go verse by verse through books. Because then you can't claim, well, you're laying off the tough stuff. Guess what? There's going to be a day that we get to divorce. There's going to be a, get to, there's going to be a day that we get to suing our, our, our brothers and sisters. Really? We're going to, yeah, we're going to get there. Why? Because it's just going to be next one day. That's the way it works. When you go verse by verse through books, I don't get to cherry pick the easy stuff and, and the stuff that, well, there might be somebody in the crowd that that applies to. So let's just skip that and wait till they're sick or not there. Nope. You know where I'm going to be next week. Right? And if that's you and you don't want to hear it, <laughs> you can start coughing too, like Phil. Right? And you could be sick next week. Right? But you better watch it online. Otherwise, I'm going to tell God on you. You know? But there are bad leaders all over the place. And you don't have to go all the way to Houston. Wait, did I say Houston? My bad. I was trying to be ambiguous there. You don't even have to go all the way down there. Right here in the metro. There's at least two that think that they need their own fleet of aircraft. One of them has their own airport. I used to drive around it all the time when I went duck hunting, you know. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? The Holy Spirit has just spoken to me. Woo! He just told me, Phil, we need our own airplane. I just got a word from the Lord, you know, why are you shaking your head there? Y'all not buying it? I can't see those guys in the south. Are they buying it or in the north? Maybe they're buying, maybe they're buying it online. So y'all stop laughing. They're buying it. Okay. But, but we don't have the real estate for an airport. We're going to need, we're either going to need an Osprey, you know, where we can, or Wait a minute, I got another word from the Lord. He said a helicopter. We got room for a helipad back there. Yeah, that's it. Our, our tech fund, we're almost done with it. We only got a couple, three more months. February, that'll be finished up. And then maybe that's our next project. 
okay? A helicopter. And, and God told me to plaster my face. Did, did you cut my mic off? <laughs> my mic just cut out. He said to plaster my face. We're going to get one of them wraps, Phil, okay? So if you feel so led, you can give to the wrapping of the helicopter, okay? So I need about $20 million come February so I can wrap my face on the helicopter so that we can minister to, the, to, to people. <clears throat> I don't think that was God. Maybe my mask is too high, right? Maybe it's become a blindfold. I don't think that was the Holy Spirit. But why is it that when it comes to church, that sometimes we just take it for granted what's said from the pulpit? Listen, there's a reason why we ask you to bring this book. It's because you need to be able to evaluate your spiritual leaders. You need to be able to evaluate me on a daily basis. You need to be able to evaluate your teachers. You need to be able to evaluate your friends. And guess what? Our passage today, chapter 10 of John, says there are good leaders and there are bad leaders spiritually. That's what it says. Did you know there are also bad leaders, you know, physically, mentally? One time I was in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was stationed there. And we would have an exercise at least once a year. And they would put us on telephone standby and they would call us up and we had to pack all our gear and get to the airplane, you know, and check in and all that stuff. And then they would say, they cut my mic out again. Do you hear them? I wasn't even talking bad about airplanes and helicopters. What y'all doing? But so all of that, you know, and, I, and I'm thinking, okay, it's another exercise. Well, they call us up. We race in. We get there. And they say, okay, now there's some buses outside. I'm like, wait, buses? We, no, you're supposed to get me home. You know, kickoff time is coming up. So, so you got to hurry and get me home in time. And then we got to the buses, and the buses took us to the, the flight line. And I'm thinking, okay, y'all got me. Okay. You got me. I'm going to be late. I might first miss first quarter, you know. And then the buses show up at an airplane. Uh, this is how old it was, Brother Coy. It was a C-141. Yeah, y'all laughing because we don't even fly them anymore. You know, them things are just scrap aluminum now. But it was a C-141, and we pull up, and I'm like, okay, y'all rented a plane. I got you. So they said, get on the plane. I'm like, really? They got to let us on that plane? They get on the plane. They take off, Brother Coy. They take off. We're like, what kind of exercise is this? Man, I'm supposed to be home by now. Now, if you've ever been on military cargo aircraft, one of the things that they like to do when they land is open the back doors. I've been on one in flight when they open the back doors. That's a whole different kind of fun. But he landed. We flew around for like three hours, and I'm like, we're just flying in circles. We're going to land. I'm going to miss the entire first half, but that's okay. We land. He opens the back doors, and I'm looking out the back door, and I said, snow. Listen, there was some freak storm in the last three hours. There wasn't no snow when we left. We found ourselves in Altus, Oklahoma. Some of you are saying, okay, y'all know, but everybody else is Googling. Where's that? It's nowhere. That's where you go to get to nowhere. You go to Altus, Oklahoma. You know, well, anyway, we had, we had to stay. We're like, oh, I, ain't miss, I'm, I missed the whole game. We didn't get home for like five days. So they get there. It's like two o'clock in the morning. And they said, go build a camp. What? It's bedtime. Yeah, when you get a camp built in the snow. So we got to go clear this camp. So they had put aggressors. Now, remember, I'm not, this is pretend, okay? This is an exercise. We're not really shooting people, okay? But anyway, we got to go clear this camp. And I'm on one of the squads that has to go clear the camp. And my part is the entry control point, right? And my squad leader, there's only five of us. Two of us are on one side of the road. Three of us on the other side. And we start taking fire from this building off on our right. And I mean, it was serious fire. It wasn't like the guns we had. It was one of those two-handed, those guns, 
You know, they make a distinctive sound, you know. So we're over here, me and my partner on this side of the road, and we're just fighting back. We're shooting like crazy, you know, shooting our blanks, you know. And eventually we run out of ammo. You know, a combat load's only like 160 rounds. It doesn't take long to run out. So we run out. Pretty soon an exercise evaluator walks up and he says, y'all out of ammo? I said, well, of course. We've been shooting at these guys for 20 minutes. He says, y'all both dead. So I just kind of roll over. I said, well, it's break time now. There ain't nothing to do if I'm dead. So I'm laying in the snow. And I'm thinking, this is silly. Why am I laying in the snow? There's a whole convoy of buses right there behind me that have, have 200 people on them. And I'm thinking, the heater's on back there. I'm not going to lay in the snow if I'm dead. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to walk down there, and I'm going to get on the bus. So when I got up, I looked across the road, and I saw the other three members of our squad. And I walk up to my squad leader, and I said, are y'all dead? I said, I'm going to get on the bus. It's warm. I said, are y'all dead? He says, no. I said, why y'all not dead? He said, well, we, we ain't even fired a shot. I said, you ain't fired a shot? You're 20 feet away from me, and we died because we ran out of ammo? I said, listen. I said, if we ever go to water for real, I said, I will shoot you first and take the radio. I said, you got a radio. You didn't think that you could call on the radio and get those 200 guys to just go mop up the floor with that guy? I said, man, I'll shoot you first and take the radio. Now, when I did go to war, he's lucky because he wasn't there. <laughs> so he survived that battle. But there are people like that that will lead you astray, won't they? They don't, they don't think. But listen, when it comes to spiritual matters, you got to be on your guard. you got to bring this. Our young people this last week, they all got Bibles. Every one of them. They got nice Bibles. And when they told them last week, they said, here's your Bible, here's your Bible, here's your Bible, here's your Bible. And then at the end of the day, they said, where do you want us to put our Bibles? And Brother David said, it's your house. You paid for those Bibles. We paid for those Bibles as a church. And we want them to bring them. We want them to read them. Next year, we're going to read through the entire Bible together as a church. Because you have to be able to use it. You have to be able to evaluate everything that's being said from the pulpit, everything that's being said in your Sunday school classes, your Bible studies, your South Park Live, whatever it is, wherever you're getting your information spiritually, you need to be able to evaluate it. And Jesus is saying to this crowd today, he's saying, you guys have been led astray and you don't even know it. And I'm showing you that there are good leaders and bad leaders and you need to be able to differentiate between the two. That's why there's a book. That's why there's scripture. It's for you and it's for me. Now, sometimes today we do the same thing as my squad leader that day. We let other people lead us astray, don't we? We let other people get us distracted from the truth and then to the point where we lose all control of the truth. We don't see truth anymore. Some of us, we allow the news to lead us astray. We allow it to rule our lives. We allow it to, to, to determine whether or not we are fearful or not all the time, don't we? We live for the news. How about this? You pull out your phone, you know exactly where the news app is, don't you? It's muscle memory now. You know right where to push the button and it'll, it'll open. How about your Bible app? Is it muscle memory? It ought to be. And that's what Jesus is telling these guys here. He says, there's a way. There's a way you can evaluate them spiritually. The day I stop following Christ is the day you should stop following me. That's what Jesus says. That's not what I'm saying. He's saying you need to do that. We can't let money lead us astray. We can't let our jobs lead us astray. We can't let any of that 
lead us astray. But too often we do. We treat God as if he's our last resort as opposed to the one we should go to. And Jesus says, you need to be careful. Now here's the second thing he says clearly. He says, you've been led astray. You've been following the wrong leaders. He says, follow me. Not me as in your pastor. Not me as in a teacher or a preacher. He says, follow me. Follow Jesus. He says, that's who you need to be following. And he does that in two ways. And we won't get to the second one today. We're going to get to that one next week. But he does it by declaring who he is. Watch this in verse 7 real quick. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door. Remember he said, anybody who comes in by another way, that guy's a thief, that guy's a robber. Now he says clearly. Now remember in a couple of weeks, we're gonna, they're going to accuse Jesus of not being clear. Well, this seems pretty clear to me. He says, follow me. I am the door. You have to go through me to get there. He says, anybody who doesn't go through me is leading people astray. They're thieves, they're robbers, they're murderers, they're destroyers. He says, you need to be following me. That's the truth. That's what he says. He says, you've got to follow him. Now, I understand how God has established the church. And I understand that he puts leaders in the church. But ultimately, everyone follows Christ. Everyone. Including the pastor. Including the teachers. Including whoever works in the nursery today. We all follow Christ. And anybody along the line that takes you away from Christ, leads you the opposite direction, is a thief is a robber. They've come in by a different way. They're in it for themselves. They're trying to make their name for themselves. They're trying to get their face on a helicopter, right? Because they don't have enough room for an airport. Otherwise, I would have said a 747, right? But Holy Spirit said, you ain't got enough real estate for that. You're going to have to settle for a helicopter. So I only need $20 million, not $120 million, because we got to build an airport too, you know? Listen, we need to be able to evaluate our leaders scripturally. That's why we stay in the word. That's why we preach the word. That's why we ask you to bring your Bibles. That's why we ask you, even for those at home watching, to have your Bibles open. Do you know that there used to be a day that this was chained physically to the altar, to the pulpit? Why? Because they didn't want them to have it at home. They want them to have it as access. Do you know why when they started translating the Bible? Do you know why that they murdered those people? That they killed them? That they buried them? And some of them, they even went back 30 years later, dug them up and burned the body? They've been dead for 30 years. I don't think you're doing any more harm. Right? Do you know why? Because... Most people couldn't read the language that it was in, and they didn't want that getting out. That way, everything they said from the pulpit, everything that they led them with, they could say anything they wanted. Like, we need a helicopter. I could say that's in Scripture. If you couldn't read the words, I could say that, couldn't I? But you guys can read. So I can't say that and get away with it, can I? I can't. Listen, God's clear that you need to be able to evaluate your leaders. You need to be able to evaluate what is said. And that standard is found here, not in someone's words, not in brain, not in someone's thinking. It's found in God's word. And that is the point. The point of the passage is that false leaders will destroy you. Listen, I don't know what your need is today. If, if you're not a believer, that's the point for you today. 
False leaders will destroy you. Those dormitory lawyers, those ones that think they know better, those ones that tell you there's no heaven, no hell, they will destroy you. And you need to be able to evaluate them spiritually. You need to be able to evaluate them according to Scripture. That's the only standard that we can use and use it correctly. Listen, how about for you believers? You say, well, I'm already a believer. Really? Who's your real leader? Who really leads in your house, in your heart? Who leads? Is it the news? Is it COVID? Because for many of us, COVID rules. I, listen, I don't like the numbers. I don't like them. They're exponentially higher than we were all shut down before. I don't like the death rate creeping up. I don't like having to do business the way that we've had to do business. I don't like the way we have to do church. The way we've... Listen... We didn't have a Thanksgiving meal. We're not going to have a Christmas one. We don't have Sunday night services. Our Wednesday night services online. I don't like any of that. But COVID doesn't rule. God rules. We're going to do everything we can to be safe. We're going to do everything we can to do due diligence. But in the meantime, we're going to allow God to rule. Not some virus. Not the news. Not some reporter. God has to be the one leading our lives. Brother Phil, I'm going to ask you guys to come. Brother David, I'm going to ask you to come next door. Who leads? I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet as we enter into a time of invitation. Who leads in your life? Who leads in your home? Is it the news? Is it, is it worry? Is it fear? What is it? It's got to be based on his rules, on his standard, not ours. Listen, I don't know what your need is today. If you're not a believer today, if you're watching with us online, there's going to be a phone number that pops up on your screen. You call that number. Somebody's going to be monitoring that phone. They're going to take this book, the one that we've been talking about all morning, and they're going to show you in Scripture how you can know this Jesus. How you can live by his standard, not yours, not mine, not some other man, not some other false leader. Listen, you need to be able to evaluate the words of any preacher you listen to, any teacher you listen to. And the only way you can do that is to be in the word, is to be in here, because there are wolves amongst us that seek to kill and destroy, that's it. Listen, if that's you today and you need Jesus, either call that number, you meet me up front, you meet Brother David up in the North Sanctuary, and you tell him you just need to know this Jesus. If you're a believer today, ask yourself this question. Who do I really follow? Who's leading me spiritually? Are you following Jesus the same way the song that you're singing right now is? Is that what you're doing? Because that's what we all ought to be doing. You do today what God would lead you to do.